This episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up on the latest in ag is a challenge to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic grain and energy solutions born of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. And joining us now to take a look at Monday's market action is starting off the week with a lot of pressure in the wheat market, some support in the soy complex, and corn kind of just drifting, caught in the middle. Joining us now, John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing. John, good to catch up with you, sir. Hopefully you had a good weekend. It was nice. Beautiful weather, obviously, here. As we know, these September weekends in Wisconsin, got to enjoy the nice ones because they're going to turn pretty ugly fairly quickly in, on us here. So beautiful weekend to get out and get some things done. Definitely. Plenty of good harvest weather across many areas of the country as well here as we get into the back half of the month outside of a few areas seeing some passing showers, but uh, maybe a little bit of that harvest pressure in the market on the day to start the week Monday. But also, I think a lot of the outside macro factors uh, just kind of starting and looking at wheat, uh, the biggest loser on the day um, by by a wide margin Uh, wheat under a lot of pressure really started in the overnight session into monday's trade i know the dollar back up near highs Uh, what are your thoughts on this wheat market what led to all the selling pressure on the day monday john well it started last week on thursday we had a reversal on the charts a hard sell off off a fairly good start to the day thursday you know nice recovery on friday with some weekend profit taking but those sellers came back into the market here today you know, first off, again, like you said, outside markets were an influence. We had the stock market down fairly sharply at the beginning of the day in the Dow average. Crude oil was down fairly sharply at the start of the day, over two bucks lower. And that dollar index was firmer. So that kind of weighed on that Sunday night and the Monday morning session across the grain complex. You know, then we still also just continue to see talk of that Russian crop getting bigger. You know, U.S. is still struggling on the demand front in terms of getting things on the books now. We did get export shipment numbers today, and those are pretty friendly, at least in terms of historically wide here. You know, we've got fairly good start in terms of the shipment pace, but still well behind the pace the USDA is expecting, but at least improved over the last couple of years here in that wheat market. But that seemed to be the breakdown again, technically, as it went down challenge on supports, did hold those at least today. So we'll have to see if we can get a turn. And we got a little bit of an uptrend on those charts, but again, we need prices to hang in here. Otherwise things can fall apart again, technically. I think that kept corn in check all day today, despite that strength in the beans. Well, you mentioned some of that support in in the wheat markets. I I noticed that as well the end of last week, especially in the KC market. And I just have to wonder if, you know, again, holding some of that support here today, bouncing off of it a little bit, uh, if this wheat market could maybe find a chance to go after some of those uptrends. But I know as well that outside market pressure, the Fed meeting this week, that's in the higher U.S. dollar. That's probably all going to be a big weight on the wheat markets. It's going to be a weight on the markets in general with that risk off mentality of things kind of fall apart. That's going to be the big news. I mean, we are expecting a 75 basis point raise. At least that's what the market is expecting on on that on the Fed meeting this week. The stock markets price that in. Now, do we get a surprise? You know, we'll have to see if something comes out in that regard. That's just going to keep everything on edge, especially if that stock market decides to go ahead and roll down to those June lows. That's still another thousand points below where we're trading here today. That would definitely make the money managers very antsy in some of these markets. You know, they are still short on the wheat market in general in terms of Fed, the managed money positioning. So it wouldn't be too hard for them to want to push and grow that position. They got a lot of length in corn. We got a lot of a decent amount of length in beans. So there's some room for them to take some money off the table here just on the technical side of things versus fundamentals. You know, in a window that we usually don't see a lot of strength. So that's something that's definitely on my concern level. You know, producers need to be wary of as we go forward here. Well, John, let's segue over and talk soybeans. They were a winner on Monday. Uh, Really started, it felt like, with that meal market. Some good strength in soy meal, plus a soybean sale to China was announced on the morning wire. I believe it was 5 million bushels for this marketing year. I think all that combined really gave some strength to uh, the soybean market on the day Monday. 
Yeah, it did. And at the same time, too, we also kind of held some pretty good supports at the end of the week last week. So we we're due for a little bouncing. That Chinese business step in was encouraging, you know, that they're still got their uh, their nose into the market. Now, so just some of the things I was reading this morning, looks like their, their crush margins are fairly friendly right now, at least here in the front end. And that still keeps them in the market for U.S. beans, even though we're competing against some of those Argentina beans with that peso revision, you know, bringing a lot of beans to market. But at the same time, our bean sales on, on the books right now are off to a pretty good pace to start 2022-23 marketing year. That'll keep this market active and the shipping side of things. Obviously, we still got to keep a close eye on weather to how do we finish this crop out. You know, again, at 200 million bushels of total carryout, that's really pretty doggone tight without some revisions from the USDA. You know, the fear of this marketplace could be we could run out of beans by midsummer again. You know, then we're going to have to figure out what it takes to get Brazilian beans to the United States. So, you know, that will be something to watch uh, going forward, obviously, is what these USDA numbers do. What do they do with the demand? But seeing that a little bit of demand news today is something we're missing from the other two grains that would really help prices out there. Just knowing that we got tight supplies and demand is nice to see in the bean market. Well, and as well, I know that we're kind of competing with those Argentine supplies with that peso dollar program. Uh, is that something that still concerns you as you watch the export side? Is China still kind of going after some of those Argentine beans right now? You know, China is a perfect value customer and they look for value and purchases of what they do in the marketplace. And, you know, that's some of the reason why maybe the corn export numbers to China are well off pace this year is because obviously, Prices are high, demand's not strong, they more hand to mouth in terms of their purchases. You go look at where we are in the, in the global scale for beans, with the exception of those you know, adjusted Argentina beans, we still have the best value, at least for the next couple of months here going forward. So obviously we saw some activity going into Argentina off that after that peso adjustment for those beans. You know, so that is something that may limit a little bit of the upside here, at least in terms of some of that demand that we were counting on and that, you know, got taken away with that move by Argentina. John, the corn market, that was largely kind of just stuck in the middle uh, between wheat and beans on Monday. I know the corn market's got its own uh, things to watch out for, maybe some seasonal harvest pressure there. But I was I was happy with how corn kind of wrapped up the day, uh, at least finishing uh, mixed uh, slightly higher on Monday session. It was actually a pretty decent price action day, you know, finishing with at least a small gain at the end of the day, working off the lows. You know, corn just seems to be kind of stuck in a bit of a technical barrier right now. You know, we got 10-day moving average over top, 100 days a key support underneath. We bounced off that the last two sessions, finished towards the top of the range. So it tells you maybe there's some buyers sitting there, you know, wanting to support this market. Again, the expectations there is this crop is going to get smaller as we see future reports here as we move into the October yield numbers. The biggest concern then is still the demand. Again, corn sales on the books are well behind the last couple of years pace. And, you know, with China basically kind of out of the market overall. So that's still the part we really want to keep an eye on is do we get some actual export business here? And now we're really watching the South American weather. Argentina seems dry. Brazil starting to pick up some rains. You know, does that their planting pace pick in, kick in here for their bushels for the spring and into the late winter? You know, that's something that this market might be watching on. So but right now, again, corn just sees a little bit of boost. And I think it just needs some demand news. We had that report fairly priced in, that USDA report from last week. That's why we didn't see much price move. And now with harvest right around the corner, it just kind of feels like prices just kind of want to gravitate sideways. A little nervous that things could break a little bit lower if things were to fall apart again than that wheat market. John, I'd love for your thoughts on this idea. It, it feels like with everything going on in the macro markets, the outside market pressures here this week, that you know the funds they're they're kind of just painting with a broad stroke right now, not really you know looking at supply demand fundamentals. And it feels like maybe the cash market is doing the job of rationing demand at least in the short term. Is that kind of a feeling that you maybe get as you look at the dynamics between the board and the cash markets right now? I would say that's a very good way to look at it. I mean, the cash market's still relatively strong for some producers in some areas, especially those areas that are going to have tighter supplies due to this year's crop being poor. You know, we're also in that window, those areas that do have supplies coming. We're seeing basis levels starting to fall apart as the end users getting through now until those new bushels get here. So the cash market still is going to be the king in terms of directing price. 
To me, the futures market at times seems to be a little bit out of sync in terms of what's really going on on the countryside. That's just due to the lack of players and the money flow and the, you know, the computer or the algorithm traders moving prices around on momentum trade you know, versus the actual fundamentals. So you know, as long as we still keep volume fairly thin, which we are, we're going to still have volatility in here and we're still going to be fairly headline driven like we have been. So, so again, still for the producer, it's all about that cash market. Where's the value at for you? Make sure you're still taking advantage of that value. Find a way to keep your risk shifted over if you need the opportunity to down the road, because again, supplies are tight, could get tighter. So that could bring even more heated volatility into this marketplace, especially as we get past the first of the year. John, let's talk the livestock markets here today. Uh, we saw for the most part, uh, Mixed action to the upside on Monday's trade, uh, led by feeder cattle, no doubt, getting a little support there from corn starting lower on the day. Hog market kind of came back, looking like maybe we found some technical support there. As you look at the proteins as a whole, uh, let's start with the cattle side. Uh, what are your thoughts there as we enter a new week? Now, cash will be king for the live cattle market again this week. We're a little higher last week, which was encouraging to see. You know, we're still seeing some good demand out there for the choice beef in terms of choice versus select on the carcass front. So it looks like packer margins are still in the positive here. So they still got a little bit of wiggle room to bid up. Cattle supplies are still going to stay on the real, on a tightening basis here. Now we got cattle on feed this week, so we'll see how that shakes out. You know, as we got these contracts right back to or challenging towards those near-term highs, so hopefully we can get a little bit of a push through and that'll be driven by the cash market. You know, feeders, I need we needed to see a little bit of a pull, you know, jump here because we had a pretty rough week last week. We've been consolidating at the bottom of that range last couple of days. You know, it feels like we're about ready to break here just on either technical selling or if the corn market were to kick back in again, that this feeder market could break through this 180 barrier. So it was encouraging to see a little bit of price movement there. You know, again, I do look at where's the cash market overall. The index is trading under futures right now in the feeders. So that keeps things a little limited in my mind. Uh, but at the same time, the cattle on feed number is going to probably continue to show those placements getting tighter, cattle numbers getting tighter overall. So I still like the cattle market choppy maybe here in the front end a little bit tied to what's happening in the grains and the cash prices for lives but i still like that longer term picture on tighter supplies you know you shift over to hogs we got a nice price recovery good week last week it's good to see us even though it wasn't a big day today we hung in there fairly well watching what the cash index is doing did turn positive a little bit towards the end of the week and and higher today so maybe that cash you know beat down that we've had here over the last couple of weeks is finding an end and the market was pricing that in on some recovery quarterly hogs and pigs coming up at the end of the month i don't think we're going to see a whole lot of expansion and again keeps me friendly out into those spring and summer months as i don't just not sure if those hog supplies are out there given we had the fact we had seven dollar corn well, John, you mentioned that cash index and hogs, and last I looked, we're almost, I believe, within about a dollar of uh, the index and that front month October contract. So to me, uh, I know that's something you mentioned. We've been watching that beat down. We've been watching that uh, very closely, but it feels like maybe that could be our uh, – one of our main areas of support here now that we got those kind of in line with each other here as we move forward. I agree with that. You know, and like I said, it started happening towards the end of the week last week. We started to see that index kind of slow its fall. You know, we're losing nearly a buck a day or a dollar, over a dollar a day in the index. And as things kind of rounded out here and today we're a little bit firmer. So that's maybe telling us, hey, that this market's ready to turn. Now we're running at a discount, especially that, you know, December contract. That's where that strength could come in and lift that prices back up again, especially if that cash market can find some footing and start climbing. So that's going to be a big key right now. And I think we saw the traders kind of step into that mindset, especially after the hard sell off we've had here over the last month or so. John, how about that dairy market as we start a new week? What stands out to you there as we look at Monday's trade? Oh, biggest thing is football season. And what football season means frozen pizza and pizza demand. And that's been kicking over into that cheese market as one of the pieces that's given cheese prices some support. You know, that's helped lift this market back up into that mid, you know, low to mid 21s, which is a great opportunity for producers again to lock in some pretty good value. We're also seeing some pretty good uh, or some step up in the export side too on, on the dairy market as well, which gives us some good price support. Now, prices still are going to be limited. 
you know, we you know, trying to get up to the upper end of 21 might be a little bit hard. So again, producers opportunities are there to make sure you're you know, watching things, locking in value. But again, that demand picture improved this week. Now we got cold storage on Thursday. So we'll see what those cheese numbers come out there. That could be a bit of a key number. Let's see what those stockpiles are. If they are building up a little faster than we want, that could also just turn into a little bit of price pressure going into next week. John, as well, uh, kind of just circling back to the macro picture and energies. I know crude oil did start lower, came back uh, off of the lows on the day Monday. Stock market kind of flirting back around unchanged. It feels like maybe a bit of a rally there, maybe just uh, kind of a, some squaring of positions ahead of the start of the Fed meeting on Tuesday, maybe. Feels a little bit like squaring of positions here more than an actual rally kicking in. I mean, we're so concerned about the demand side of the equation on the energy front. Uh, that's definitely going to just kind of weigh out, even though those global supplies are still tight overall. You know, so it's just watching. We, you know, we went down, kind of tested low here from last week, did bounce off it today. You know, again, I just don't think we're out of the woods here. You know, we're under the 200-day moving average in terms of that front month crude oil chart. That's kind of a swing point for me, whether it's, you know, mar markets can be supported or turn a little bit more bearish. Right now, until we get back above that, it feels like we've got a better chance of going down to that $80 level, and then maybe we'll see some support. So that's my fear right now is still that we got weakness coming. You know, if the Fed meeting comes out, gives us some numbers we don't need, the equity markets tumble, that's gonna pull that crude oil number down as well. And that could weigh across the entire commodity space and some more risk off type trade. John, fantastic stuff as always. Uh, before we let you go, floor is yours. Anything else you wanna mention here today on Market Talk? You know, again, producers, especially in the grain markets right now, you've got great value in front of you. Don't fall asleep on that. I'm working out into the spring and summer months now too. Make sure we're protecting the storage. If you're going to put bushels in the bin, make sure you get a floor underneath here again, because we've got a lot of things that are going to be happening over the next six months from the geopolitical side to the production side, to what's going on in South American production, demand concerns. You know, we saw the USDA make some pretty strong demand adjustments on that last report. They continue to make those, that's gonna make that supply side bigger. So think about protecting the value, but keep that flexibility open to the upside. Well, John, the producers uh, need a little advice. I know they can reach out to you and the folks there at Total Farm Marketing very easily. How can they do that? Love chat with them anytime, then give me a call, 800-334-9779. Shoot me an email, John H at totalfarmmarketing.com. And again, I keep talking about our website, totalfarmmarketing.com. A lot of great information for producers out there. Take advantage of it. Again, there's no obligation to pick up the phone and just ask questions. I'd love to chat with you about the markets. You know, if there's questions about what we do and what type of strategies we have, I'll gladly take the time and go through and do a little bit of education. Well, with that, we appreciate the time as always. John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing. Thanks for joining us here today. And uh, I know both of us are happy as well. Packers won uh, Sunday night football. So <laughs> got to win over the Bears, right? <laughs> it's been a nice run for us. I'm, you know, unfortunately for the rest of my family's Bear fans, but it makes my, <laughs> makes my first week, at least couple of weeks of the season working a lot better after last Sunday. So <laughs> I'm just happier that football's back on TV. That's, that's my only thing. So with that, John Heimberg, Total Farm Marketing. Always a pleasure, sir. Have a great week. Thank you. Sounds good. Have a great week. And that's going to do it for Market Talk today. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm your host, Jesse Allen. Have a fantastic rest of your day.